Hi, it's Jackie Katstick, and this is The Natural Healing Reel. Today, I have another amazing guest, and it's Christine Memoli, and she has been a natural healer for her whole life. Her dad yes. was into this long before it became even kind of a hippie groupy thing, but, <laughs> but she has been, she's a little ahead of her time and has lived her whole life in in having the knowledge of of all of the natural modalities which she has um picked three um the reiki is her yes. is her specialty but also is into um the doTERRA natural oils and nutrition yes. and she is going to share with us how we can best live a happy healthy natural life like she has so oh. welcome Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for coming and joining us. I'm having a little bit of a fight with my screen here. I'm not sure if you're noticing <laughs> that. Sorry about it. No, it's fine. Technology and I do not mix too well either. Yeah, I wonder what that is. I really struggle. I, it ties, I get lost. Anyways, our, maybe our generation. <laughs> Could maybe. be. Or we'd that. much rather be out in nature than on a computer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, I think we're all like really good at different things and it's just, yeah. like, we'll <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so tell where, where are you from? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Brooklyn. I currently live in Queens with my husband and my three kids. And how is that? I've never been. Oh, that um, is it, is it must I, be very when colorful. I grew up in Brooklyn. It was wonderful. Uh, things have changed. I now have, my husband and I have a beautiful home on the beach, uh, which is very much what I needed as I got older to be by the ocean, to sit calmly and reflect and the waves. And it's different than listening to it on my phone to help me sleep than it is from sitting in the sand and listening and watching. I, I, I am right with you. I live right by the ocean too. And it's just so, it, it's just what a gift to have. Yes. That. Yes. And it when so we get up heat. early enough and we sit on our porch in the summer, not now it's too cold, but in the summer you can watch the dolphins go by. Oh. So it is quite a blessing. How how wonderful is that? I just love that. Yeah. You know, yeah. on holidays, right? You go sit out and you watch in Mexico or whatever, them all jumping in. It's yes. Yeah. I like to have that every day. That's that, that is natural healing right there. I believe. Don't you? Yes, it is. You just walk out onto the boardwalk, take a couple of deep breaths and you could come right back in and you're, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's Good really center. powerful, isn't it? Yes. Good for you. Yes. So, so tell, tell me about, um, what your, your kind of your journey, your dad, you, it actually, you or? well, actually my both parents, um, are children of immigrants. Okay. So my dad, when he was seven years old, went down on a very downward spiraling health conditions. He had very bad asthma. They gave him medication, which was causing him to go blind. Now, my dad is currently 75. So bear in mind, all those years ago, the doctor came to your house. You didn't go to the office. So my grandmother, at one point, my father was pretty much hardly breathing, he should have been in a hospital and the doctor was coming with yet again, another shot to give him. And my grandmother lost it. And she was like, get out of my house. She threw him down a flight of steps. And <laughs> she took my father, believe it or not, to a chiropractor. And from that moment on, my father at the age of seven, and he's a Vietnam veteran, mind you, wow. and from the age of seven, never went to a doctor again. He is now 75. When he met my mom, again, daughter of immigrants, they were all medical. So my father explained his journey, but as my mother was explaining to him in that day, my mom was a housewife. She did not work. 
And she was like, I'm home with the kids. I'm going to do what helps me to get through the day. And I have an older sister and she got her first round of vaccines and she had very bad asthma where she was hospitalized. And they took my sister home from the hospital. And that was the last time anybody saw a doctor in my family. <laughs> my mom was done. We were raised with chiropractic care, which throughout my pregnancies, I've had three and by no means small children. My smallest child was nine pounds. Uh, my largest was almost 10 and a half. Um, yeah, so healthy babies, no problem pregnancies other than very large. And I did go to a midwife, but my care was primarily under, at that time, under a, a chiropractor. My grandmother, my mother's mother got very ill. And she had to have, she was a diabetic. She had a foot amputated. And we were in the hospital one day and one of my mother's friends came to visit. And I'll never forget it because I never left my grandmother's side. She lived with us and I was very close. And she did Reiki on my grandmother. And my grandmother was not of the holistic mindset. And all I know is, after she was not coherent the whole time when she was done with the treatment my grandmother looked at me and she said to me but Chrissy what what's going on I said what do you mean like she knew she was in the hospital she goes don't you see these beautiful colors I feel so warm I feel so good and I'm like well don't get out of bed yet just sit there like I was afraid she was gonna hop out of the bed and that was my first encounter with Reiki and then I was like, okay, how did you do that? And then I started classes and circles and I want to do this. I want to make somebody feel like this. So I got my bachelor's in alternative medicine, my master's in functional nutrition, and I have all of my levels of Reiki completed. I am certified. So that was my first encounter. And then I just love making people feel good. The pandemic has been difficult. And with that, I mean, because Reiki, although you're not necessarily touching the person, you are in person, but people were afraid. So we stopped. I had stopped for a time being. And then I was like, wait a minute, we could do virtual. We could do distant. And that brought up so many more questions because like, well, how could you treat me if I'm in Jersey? And I'm like, you'd be amazed. Energy knows where to go. You, you know, you could do it. And that, that's kind of like what I do. I teach the person. I'm not even really necessary. You could do it yourself. I do self Reiki treatments. I taught my children how to do them. You, to unlock your knowledge is your power. So this is what you're going to do. Teach yourself and learn because unfortunately I can't live with everyone and teach them. <laughs> no, you need to, you, you're empowering them. You're not, you're, you're teaching them how to fish. Yes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. It's, that's, that's awesome. It's, um, you're moving energy and through all the meridians where we were blocked and stuck and yes that's, that's what's happening there that's I, it's so powerful I, I i do it on my dog in the middle of the night because he's like old and i could see him kind of looks like brittle sometimes yes. it scares me i'm like are you dead <laughs> so then i'll just like i'll do and he's just softens right it's incredible but did you ever like as a mom it was explained to me you know when you say to the kids when they're little Oh, you got a boo boo. Come here, let mommy kiss it. That's you transferring your energy to them and making them feel better. You don't even know what it is when your mom, it's like, oh my gosh, I just don't want you to hurt. That's why hugs are so important. It's so good for your mental health to be hugged and, and the transfer of positive energy can do wonders for your health. And then I'm always, I want to know the science of it. 
I, <laughs> so I became very good friends with a woman who is an acup was at the time an acupuncturist. And I started doing part-time work for her when my kids were small. And I learned so much from her. And then she started doing something, which this is what I love. She went back to school as an older woman and she started doing endobiogeny. Which is? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> endobiogeny, why I love it so is it's a middle ground of medical and holistic. So what you're doing is it's based off your endocrine system where all of the hormones are released. Oh, so okay. what, what I would do is I would get a special script to go for special blood work. The blood work would then be sent to my acupuncturist. A, medical doctors are in class for it too. It's not just acupuncturist. And then from there to balance out my hormones, they prescribe herbs, um, uh, tinctures, rubs, treatments like that, that I do at home every day to balance me out. I had menopause nipped in the bud <laughs> forever because I, I ended up going through my changes at an early age. But my whole, that was due to um, a whole my midwife, my uterus was a mess. They wanted a hysterectomy, which I did not want to do. So I ended up doing endobiogeny and it saved me, my uterus and a whole bunch of other stuff. But medical doctors can give you the script for the blood work. And the reason why I prefer to go to an acupuncturist because my belief, and I could be wrong, but the majority of medical doctors don't have the training in herbs that my acupuncturist who majored in and is licensed in Chinese herbs and acupuncture, the, the medical doctors don't have that knowledge. They're just going off a software program. And although that'll help, Sometimes she can tweak it in a way that a medical doctor may not be able to. And if even if you're on a medication, let's say you're a diabetic, let's say you're on hormone therapy, they take all of that into consideration with the blood work, with the milligrams, and they go through all of it. And she works with the primary care physician and make sure there's no contraindications. And it just, it balances you out completely. You know, um, my experience is I have seen a chiropractor for my whole life because my mom did. She was, she believed in that. And so I was introduced to that as well at a young age. But my, my naturopath, he was a chiropractor first and then he went back to school and became a naturopath. And we did Dr. Joe together, him and his wife. And, and he is a ball of knowledge, you know, and then he, he's done, I can't even tell you how many extra modalities that he does, but, you know, does all the energy tests and goes through your whole systems and that at yes. the end of it kind of just gives you this natural thing. But you know, as he's going, that is that strong now, like you don't need yes. that, we've done that, we've balanced this. It's pretty, I don't know how, I don't know how people don't just line up out the door because it's, it's not a medicine. It, it's actually right at your root of the core of the, and it hits like, an, it, it's just so outstanding because it kind of hits I, the emotions and like what you're saying, the hormones, right? Right. Yeah. But I think because insurance companies do not cover it. And I think because, you know, like in every field, there is somebody who is not practicing the way that they should. Well, and those that the, in doctors as well, though. <laughs> well, that's what I said in every in every, in every case, every field. And what happens is those are the highlighted cases. Like, even though I prefer to say as far away from doctors as I can, there are wonderful doctors out there. I'm not saying you shouldn't. What I think the best is some form of middle ground. That's everything in life is balance. And if you can balance it, and I feel that the endobiogeny and keeping up with your Reiki, 
and your oils. My husband just had surgery at the beginning of the week. I've been using oils on him, giving him Reiki treatments. He's up and walking around. It's a three month recovery. He's already walking and returning to work on Monday. Wow. So who knows? So maybe what, what happened? What happens in that? That what happens with him that he can get that quick of a turnaround? In your in your perception, what's going on there? When, when your energies are balanced, your body can function at its fullest potential. And what I believe when we were created, everything we need for our health was given to us, whether it be inside of us or given to us by our land, but it, we have the capability of doing that. So I think when there is a person that can bring it out of you to balance it, it, it helps the recovery period a lo whole lot quicker than anything else. It's, um, from my experience, it's, it's like being those days where everything just clicked and you're in the flow. That's how it feels, right? Because all the energy is moving. You're not blocked and, and feeling this, right. that, right? So it, absolutely. That, that's, what, Abs yeah, it, it's powerful and it's addictive, that feeling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is so bad that um, I know for me, I cannot step foot out of my house in the morning unless I've done a meditation, a mindful meditation, unless I've done my self Reiki treatment, I am oiled off, and then I could go out and face the world. Well, good for you, because <laughs> that's the key is doing, having that structure, right? Like having yes. system where you put yourself in the beginning of the day and set that intention, right? Just see your day. It's it's magical, isn't it? It is. And the most powerful thing any one of us has is our minds. So once you set that intention in your mind, that'll set up your day. And, and it's all on how you're viewing it, how you're looking at it. If you're going to look at a situation negatively, it's going to proceed negatively. If you're going to look at it positively, and then that's where your energy is going to get blocked. When you are walking around and your shoulders are in your ears and, and you're so clenched, people don't even realize it. Like I'll say to my sons, my oldest especially, take a breath. My, my shoulders are down. They can go down further. You're not realizing it because you're so used to being up here. And then when I'm like, you have to do it from your stomach and then you see the shoulders go down. He's like, wow, how'd you do that? And I said, I didn't do anything. I just had to sit take a breath but you don't realize it because you're so used to functioning at that survival mode that you're not used to just all right wait let me process the the situation let me think about it and then proceed everybody's just racing and i don't know where they're racing to yeah i i definitely felt like i couldn't go any faster before COVID. I was grateful yeah. for that, that like, okay, do we get like, we're going to have a break actually? <laughs> that would be wonderful. The, I, I think the other thing that I have learned in this intense kind of time that we're in is that we're, a, a lot of us are absorbing everybody's energies of fear. And yes. like, especially I'm an empath and I feel deeply other yes. energies and somebody's got a beef or they got, I can just feel all of it. And it's, and, and how to get rid of that. You got to clear that all, all day. And I, I just learned that, that you just ask, return to sender, whatever energy is <laughs> on my own, return to sender. And yes. you, you know, if you do take that breath, boy, oh boy, go inside. You can really feel what's left is, is not like this. <laughs> right. And also I found what is very helpful for me and my husband and my kids is when you are venturing outside of your safe haven energy, you always put yourself in a white light, like a whole bubble and nothing can penetrate that. Cause if you do that, then the negativity will stay at arm's length and you can deal with it at your pace, not the other person's pace. 
And that's important too. Don't make someone else's emergency your emergency. You have to process. It's, that's huge because, um, and, and you can just, you just need to ask, like if you forget to do like a visualization and stuff, like I know for myself, you know, if I'm driving, get in the car, then I'll just ask, right? Ask for recovering. And it, it, it's just like in your, it does, it's not some big hard deal. Like it's just, no. they can't help, the universe can't help us if we don't ask because we have that right, problem, right? But, Absolutely. But that, but you know, I still am not asking all day. Right. No. But as soon as we start asking, it's like boom, 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 and it, and it's very fun. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to learn that that you know that to do this instead of tell stories of of horrific trauma and pain of yourself or others, or and then we just keep getting more of that. I've been there for quite a few years, and and telling a new story when you're in lots of trauma is very challenging. Right. Yes, it is. When I usually do my first Reiki treatment with, with a new patient, I always explain to them that I, I don't, I, it's not a special gift. Everyone has the gift. What it is, is I've learned how to utilize it. So my goal is I'm gonna show you quickly how to utilize it in a self-practice manner. Although I am certified to teach, and maybe I'm pushing myself out of the market too. I don't know. I don't care. I want somebody to know, you know what? You have this in you. Because if each one of us practiced a little bit more kindness and balancing and self-awareness, what a difference the world would be than what we're living in right now. Yeah, you know what, and, and I know even for myself, it's even like I love this work, and I and I, I eat, but to just sit down and close my eyes for five minutes, do you think I can do that? No, I got to get this, not with that. I've got the ADHD; it's really bad, anyways. But it's uh, you know, and, and it's just it's just taking five breaths, even to sit down for a second, and when I do that, and I breathe into my heart, and then you know, breathe out, and I just focus on that brain heart coherence. It's like. It's five breaths and you alter your whole state, right? Yes. It, and there's so many little little gifts of tools that, you know, all kinds of breath and Well, well, the other side of it too is what you're eating is affecting your mind, your body. So if you're eating, let's say chocolate donuts all day, what's you're wrong with gonna that? what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you, yeah. you, you're going to be all over the map until you crash. Oh, maybe, maybe that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> mine too, mine too. I, I actually had to work very hard because, I mean, listen, when, when I had my kids, it was you eat here, you eat there. My focus was everywhere but me. And I had to learn that focusing on me was not selfish it's important for my, my health and theirs. Well, they, you have nothing to give. I, I'm still doing the mother thing. I have a child every nine years, so I'm like sticking <laughs> it still. And, and really it's, there's the cup's empty because we try to, you know, we're trying to be superwoman for some reason. And right. It's ridiculous because no, we can't do all those things. Like you can't. Yeah, you need to you need to have your attention and attention on one thing at a time to do that. To have right to, and you can't so, give five things at one time a hundred percent. It's an impossibility. And I know that because I keep trying. <laughs> I'm stop falling on we, my <laughs> we all do, but you you have to look at it and say, okay, let me pick the most important, and, and I'll do that. I love when I come home from work. I have a flight of steps and I, I think it's, I have 13 steps to get to the top. I think I get to the third and I've already heard mom six times. Right. And I'm like, all right, take a breath guys. Let me get out of my scrubs. Let me do what I got to do. And then I will sit with each of you and we'll go over the day. And I do that often dinner time. 
we are old fashioned where it's the five of us at a table and we are going around the table and we are talking about our day. Do you know what? The, I, the Blue Blood show is my favorite because that, because they do that, right? It's like, do they? I've never watched they do, That's the favorite part. My favorite part of the show is that they sit down at the Sunday dinner, right? And they're all having their conversations about their week. Yeah, it's, you know, we we grew up like that, but our house is is everybody's schedule. And the hard part is, I mean, I'm fortunate that my husband who has his views growing up were very different than mine. His family was very medical, oh. but he is so supportive of what I, when I got my first bachelor's, I was a teacher and I went to school and I was teaching special ed. And then I had my son, my oldest son. And I had, we planned it out perfectly. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of saying I make a plan and God laughs at me. So I had this perfect plan. He was born in the third week of June. I took my time. September, I'd go back to work. Life is perfect. And then here comes this little boy that they hand me. And for the first time, I bust out in tears. I look at my husband. I'm like, I will do anything you want. Don't make me leave him ever. And he's like, all right, no problem. You don't have to return to work. And then I was home with him for about a year. And I said, I don't want to teach anymore. I did that because in, at the time when I was 18, my, my parents dictated what I was going to do. See, my mom, had, at, when she wanted to go to school, my grandfather felt, why am I paying for you to go to school to get married and stay home and have kids? No. So my mother wasn't allowed to go to college. When I was going to college, my mother thought that that was the best. But unfortunately, it was also dictate science. You can't go into science. You're a girl. I had to go into teaching. So when I had a family, I could be home with them. Their days off would be my days off. So I was, I was guided into being a teacher, but my heart wasn't being a teacher. So I, I, and I taught for nine years, but once I had my son, I was like, I'm not leaving him. I'm not. And then I did a mommy and me class and he might've been six months old and they were teaching about how to rub in the circular patterns for digestion and this and that. And I was like, well, where did you learn that? Who told you this? And she started giving me resources. And then I came home and I was like, honey, I'm not going back to work ever. I'm going back to school and I'm going into a whole nother career path. And he was like, okay, whatever you want to do. And, and that's how I went back to school. And I got my bachelor's in science of alternative medicine, my master's in functional. And now I want to go back. Because, of course, I feel like I'm always learning. And I want to become a doctor of natural medicine, which would make me board certified. And it increases my modalities to 10. Because you know, I think there's something very, from very, everywhere. Very awesome to hear your, that's wonderful. What a, what a gift, first of all, that your husband had that for you. And just, you yes. know, yeah, what a gift. That's it. I, I, in that support. sense, I was lucky. Yes, I was very <laughs> I, lucky. I hear you. I was, yeah, <laughs> on that train too. <laughs> you know, I mean, it could have went a different path. And we did the whole, at first I wanted to do the at-home birth with my oldest. That and my husband's me. like, you, that's what my husband said. He goes, listen, I'm all for your natural You've been going to the midwife, but God forbid, in Rockaway, where I live, there's not really a hospital on the peninsula. So he's like, the doctor that you're, the midwife that I'm affiliated with was about an hour from my house. So he's like, you know, let's think about this. He didn't want to deliver the baby. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> I had all to do to have him in the room with me. But it was so funny because when I did give birth, 
See, I, I, I have a very different way of looking at things. That's a person's actual birthday. I know we celebrate it every year, but we're not born every year. So when I gave birth, my mother, my sister, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, everybody was in the room with me with party hats and, and cupcakes. And it was a party when Peter was You got born. your legs up in the stirrups and yeah awesome and go with that <laughs> he goes going right I, that was, it was like my my sisters was like that i was like oh lordy nobody's coming in with mine <laughs> holy cow my only stipulation is other than my husband i wanted no men i didn't want my father or father-in-law or brothers-in-law in there you know we kept it to the women my mother-in-law did not have a daughter so I was like, come on in, you know, see what it's like from the other end. You've only been on my side. Now you can see what it's like on the other side. And it, it was, it was wonderful having them all there. Yeah, I, I, uh, my, um, my, my third child, she came uh, three months early. Wow. And I was in labor for nine days. And when, and then all of a sudden when they checked me, she was coming out feet first and it was literally 10 minutes emergency c-section so that like like things like that happen and, and like they're like i'm there all these doctors are looking at me nobody realized that the baby had gone breach <clears throat> like it was but it's just those little things that can happen that just i don't know i i would just be i i obviously don't have the when you have the knowledge then you don't have the fear, right? So I right. clearly don't have the knowledge because I still have the fear when I hear that. <laughs> I think, but you know what? I think fear is something we, someone of our generation was taught. Absolutely. I, that's what rules us is you, you can't quit a job unless you have another job. You you can't do this unless you have that. And, and that's what, we were taught was to be afraid yes and that's what keeps us stuck in these unhappy yes. patterns of yes uh, doing the same thing over and over because we're running on the wheel and we're not changing yes. anything and i just want to go live now like it's like i just feel yes. like like enough now you know doing this yes. this program and everybody's trying to fit into the box and you know, nobody really it's, fits into that box properly, but everybody's got their big cat no. toe in it. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know what happened to me. About three years ago, I made a change. And out of nowhere, someone like me that has always, my entire life, been so fearful, I said to my husband, I want to go jet skiing. He goes, you've never been jet skiing. I said, it's okay, let's do it. And I don't know, I said it in passing to my mother. She's like, oh my God, you're going to fall. You're going to hit your head. You could die. You could drown. Right? And I'm like, okay, right there. Right there. So now we put that intention out there into the universe, <laughs> us mothers, but un unconscious that, right. that that whatever we're talking thinking about, we're going to get more of, right? Yes. Like, we just, we just, nobody's been, t well, some of us have been taught, but as a, a collective, people don't understand that at all. No. And, and it's 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 so important because that's how we get things to work in our life, right? Right. And it's the manifesting. What you put out there is what you're going to manifest. And then I said, well, I'm not going jet skiing this week because of all the wonderful <laughs> things my mother said, but I will do it. And she and then we were talking about going skiing. She goes, all these years I kept you safe. Now you want to do things to break you. Um, right? Come on. But you know, so I, I've um, been talking with an old friend and we've been kind of going through this process because he's just kind of awakening up to these things. He's like, wow, wow. And, and it's kind of fun because it's like to watch somebody unfold yes. that, stuff, right? And have all of these, you know, signs and, and the manifestations and, you know, it's just, we're very powerful. We don't have any idea how to access it. No, no. And, and that's the thing you need to learn. Everybody has these tools. They just have to learn how to use them. Everybody. Everyone. Everybody Everyone has, has it. I like to, think to do the work, right? All those negative stories. We can't get rid of them until we know that they're there. 
right? Oh my gosh. And when you realize they're there, and this is quite a funny story. I had a patient and she was a licensed massage therapist and she calls me up one day and she's like, Christine, I've never done Reiki. Can I come to you? I said, of course. And we were talking and she's had a lot of obstacles in her life. And I'm like, you know, the, the Reiki can sometimes bring stuff up because you're moving energy, you're unblocking. So, no, she thought I was crazy. So she asked me. I've been called okay. that a few times myself. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. But it was so funny because she had me record what was going on, the session. And then the recording, I mean, we don't talk or anything, but she was legitimately growling at me growling when I would get to the heart chakra wow. and later on she's like why was I growling at you and I'm like I don't know maybe it's something that that's not a tool I have that is something you would have to go back start out what what is blocking you and and why you're feeling that way and a lot of that has to do with believe it or not our mindset and what we were trained to think and automatically going to the negative instead of the positive and all that fun stuff it causes so many blockages that we don't even know and that's why there's so many hidden diseases because there's blockages in our energy paths that we are not able to release because we don't know they're there. That's right. That's right. And so if you can, if you can find somebody who is kind of on that path to, to it, it's such a gift because then you're kind of going, Hey, right. And, oh, thanks. Right. And you can kind of lift each other instead of what, you know, the other part of society is doing where they're kind of, kind of stepping on people, right. To step themselves right. up. Such a, it's such a horrible energy <laughs> and it's like can we not do something where we can like just help lift each other and be and yes then, and then you're getting more and more and it just starts to build and roll like a big snowball but right. but people don't know people don't know they're no. threatened if you're they've yes. got all of this but all of a sudden they see somebody do something that's getting some attention and then all of a sudden they're threatened and and instead right. of going hey what are you doing there like let's share and then teach me and and it's, right I, I, I really, I really, really, really wish and hope that these little podcasts and this information, these conversations that somebody hears that and goes, oh, really? That's like, what is that? Like, where do I, you know? From your lips to God's ears, yes. And that's why so many patients, the first time when I teach them how to hone into their own energy so that they can do cell breaking. And the patients are like, why are you teaching me? Cause then you don't have to come back. I'm like, all right, then I don't have to come back, but at least you can help yourself. Yeah. That's the most important thing. And you can help thing. yourself during the week and then come see me next week if you need another one and have that, right? Like, right, take a day off, I'll do it for you. Right? <laughs> take a day off, you're funny. Everybody uh, needs a day off. Yeah, and is it hard for you to explain to them what, what to do for the Reiki, like to how to hone in? Are you gonna share no, it's, that? It, oh, yes. How do you share? So, it's so funny because again, the way that I do it, I learned it when I was attending Chinese medicine school. So you stand up and you're by, I'm gonna show you by your abdomen like this as a triangle, yep. but you're not touching. So what happens is you're envisioning at that point, you're, it's all visualization. You are visualizing your feet like tree roots into the ground and the soil and the earth. And there's like a cone of white energy coming from the universe to the top of your crown chakra. And it's just going all the way through you and just flowing. And as you're doing that, you're going to start to feel your hands with the magnetic pull. And then you're going to go like this and see how far you can pull that energy. And then when you're comfortable, you're going to then work on yourself or the other person. But you at that point have opened yourself up as the conduit for Reiki. 
and you can allow the energy from the universe go to the other person and energy knows where to go i'm, I'm just the conduit the energy knows it'll go it'll heal it'll go where it's needed i don't have to sit there and go you have to go here it just goes it flows I, uh, I had a treatment, um, I have a coach and I did that exact um, last night, put me right from a very energetic state to just peace. It's so yes. powerful. And it's just, it's so lovely when somebody talks you through something like that, you can do it yourself, but it's very powerful to have that intention from somebody like yourself. I, right? I notice if it's, believe it or not, it's easier when someone else is guiding you. Because when you are doing it yourself, your mind will wander with other thoughts. And it's like, gee, should I be doing this? I have laundry. I got to drive this kid to this doctor's appointment. I have to start dinner. And you're not focused on someone else's voice to guide you. You're focused that when you only are dependent upon yourself, you have to be very disciplined. And we're not that, like that's no. the training. That's the training, yeah. right? We, our body just wants to get up and go back into the program, and it, yes. and, and and until we start to retrain it and go, okay, that's just like, why do I have to get up, right? And then just right. kind of go against that, and it doesn't take very long to get a few wins in there, you know, like just no. perceive it differently. Anyways, that's I've been doing that for myself, and it's it's really fun to see how you know, how, how you progress through and right. a bigger space of peace and happiness, right? Well, you know, it is everybody. I'm different from you. Like I try to teach the kids. Yes, our human anatomy is similar. And when I say similar it is yes, we all have hearts, we all have lungs and kidneys. But if you ever asked a surgeon, they will, because I have, because I'm annoying with my questions, they will tell you nobody's is in the exact same spot. Yeah. Someone's organ may be off a little by a millimeter, let's say. And, and it's so important because that's your distinction. Yes, we are. We all have the same stuff but we're all unique. So what I need may not be what you need or what you need or what you need. That's why all these modalities are so important because yes, I can train my mind and I can do it, but what I can do for me may not be what you need or what you want to do. So you, you, to find that right fit is so hard. That's why all the different modalities are so interesting to me because I want to learn it because maybe I don't need it, but maybe one of my patients will. Well, and do you find like I, uh, I became, a, I went through a bunch of trauma a few years back and I just had a lot of loss and some brain injury and stuff. And I'm so sorry. Thank you. And um, just that, that pile of it was just so extreme that I was, wasn't really coping. So I, 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 I know this work, but I needed to know how. Like I, yes, I don't have to know. You need to know how Joe, Joe just, yes. said, okay? I, he just popped on my, the YouTube channel one day, of course, right. Just was meant to, and I'd never heard of him or seen him chiropractor. And, and yes. do you know him? Do you know about uh, Dispenza? Give me the name again. Joe Dispenza. No, I have not heard of it. So he was in a triathlon, I believe. And on the bike part of it, some old lady in a big truck, I think, didn't see him, and, and he was waved through to go this way, and she went through, and and she was dragging him, like she took him off his bike, and, and oh my him. gosh, a lot of damage. He would have been in a paralyzed, maybe in a cast, body cast, and all this, no life from what he's used to being an athlete, a chiropractor, and right, and so he he in his um, state, he decided that he wasn't going to do all the surgeries, which they thought maybe he was you know, not thinking properly, but what he right. did do is he healed himself by the visualization they had, you know, turned. And so he would go through each vertebrae and then the, then the mind would start talking, right? And he'd have to start over. And, but he said, I believe it was like by the third week, all of a sudden he hit Pater and it was like this, 
he could go through each vertebrae, which he would, you know, knew very wow. well. And he just visualized himself as whole and perfect, right? Right. And didn't allow the the oh my god, what about my business? Oh my god, how am I gonna pay? Like he he was able to get that space in there, and thankfully he knew about that. He yes, know, yoga or whatever he however he learned. It's a phenomenal story. 10, 10 or 10 to 12 weeks later, he's back at work and he's back in the gym. He, it's was my, it's like he, my. Was he would have no life if he didn't take that risk and walk through, like you right. were talking about walking through fear. It's an amazing so story. My, my dad, I believe I told you is a, is a veteran from the Vietnam War. So he goes to the VA for treatments if he needs. So he was having a gallbladder attack and went to the ER. And the surgeon came in and says, we have to remove your gallbladder. He said, no. He goes, what do you mean? No, you, you need to get rid of it. It's causing you problems. He goes, so my father said to the surgeon, <laughs> God gave it to me when I came in. When I leave, it's coming with me. I love him. <laughs> Wait, so now... I, me and my mother and and I are sitting there and like, Dad, I understand. No, you don't understand. It's mine. They can't have it. And I'm like, I really want you to think about this. You're not a young man and you don't eat the best. Maybe this is something. So, of course, to shut me and my mother up, he goes through with the surgery. Do you know they couldn't remove his gallbladder? <laughs> that was five years ago. This man still has everything he was born with. Do you know what? Power of thought, right? And yes. Then you get a feeling, and then the feeling creates a vibration and a frequency, and and it's just like that, right? I love yeah, that. He's, no, God gave it to me. And when I came in, I'm going out with it. I'm like, Dad, some things have to go. And he's like, no. Just yeah. no. Well, no and, and it sounds like he intuitively knew that that was like it's do you know what i mean like he just was like no that's not happening because it sounds like he actually really knew that that didn't wasn't supposed to happen i i'm not sure what yeah. i can say to you is of all the things that my dad has been through and all the things that he has seen and done in his life his mind is his most powerful part of him he can control any, he's not quick to anger, whereas my mother went from zero to 100 growing up. Me too. My father was always even and like, no. And I always feel like I have to justify. My father's like, no, he's great with boundaries. I am not. No, I'm not doing it. And he just didn't want to give up his gallbladder. So he refused. They That's tried great. and it didn't work. Yeah. yeah. And he great. keeps telling us he's going to live till he's 120. So we better figure out who he's living with. Well, <laughs> you, better, you better get on that because I bet that's what he's going to be doing. I'm sure of it. Yeah. I'm sure of it. And, you know, you were talking about uh, healing, like healing at a distance. And yes. I actually had an experience of that doing that Joe Dispenza course. There was a thousand of us in Vancouver okay. and we were in intense meditation. And at the end of this week, some children that were very, very sick in Mexico, I believe that there was two little ones. Um, we did a healing, a thousand of us. And, right. it, and it's powerful. And it, it's so incredible when like, just the intention of somebody's energy and God knows how it works. But it's like the it's like the internet, right? How how the heck is that all going on in the cloud, right? Where's the cloud, energy? Right? No, just that we're just energy, yes. right? Yes, and it knows where to go. We don't have to tell it. And if I'm intending it to, let's say, go to you at two o'clock, yeah, it will go, and you just have to receive. That's right. That's all it is: an intent to and the other person to receive it. And as long as that's done, you're yeah. good to go. Yes, that's important, right? Like you have, if you're sending um, uh, or you're trying to help somebody clear energy, you have to have their permission, right? Oh, we cannot work on 
anyone yeah. without even in the, in present. Like if you come into my office, yeah. I have to ask you first. I cannot just work on you. Which, which is awesome. And so when people are, are sending energy to people without their permission, that's when it starts to become not good energy, I believe. Right? Um, it's murky waters there. And, and the reason why I say that is because the other person's not willing to receive it. Doesn't know, maybe even, right? Maybe, but the other side of it is you as the person receiving it has to be of a certain mindset that you are getting this energy. If your mindset isn't in the right mode to receive, you're not getting the, the good stuff you're only going to get what you're allowing and, and it's not going to work to its fullest potential. Do you know, and, and, and I think the best analogy that I got to like for that, for people who don't know is that it's the, it's like you're broadcasting a radio station, like a frequency. And sometimes yes. you're up here doing the nice little soft music. And sometimes you're down here doing the rock music and it's that yeah. it's <laughs> wherever you're, and sometimes you're not in the field of that vibration, right? And that's- Right, yeah. absolutely. And if you're not there to receive it the way it's intended, it's just not gonna work. Yeah, yeah. Or And do you, is it also that if you don't believe, like if you don't believe you don't receive, right? So if somebody's sending you healing energy and, and you're sitting there saying, yeah, I don't think about this. Does it still, are you, are you still getting benefits or are you, you're still- well, Yes, benefits, you can, Again, you will get a benefit, but your mindset is going to enhance it. So if you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting Reiki at two o'clock and I might feel better, I might not. And then maybe you may have a little feeling of well-being at 2.30 and be like, oh, it could have been or it could have been that I passed gas. I, I, I mean, it could have been anything. <laughs> you know, the skeptics are going to be skeptical. You you can't change that. Yeah. And it, it's just a friend of mine came to the office and was like, Christine, my daughter, she's 11 years old and she's suffering so bad from anxiety with school. What do I do? So my recommendation was um besides the visual visualization and giving her distance reiki i gave her a little bit of lavender to put on her heart points mm -hmm. and i was like just try it it worked for my son because we lived through hurricane sandy and he had ptsd so i said try it and then she came to me the end of the week and she goes oh my gosh my daughter had a test and she didn't break down once and i'm like okay did you tell her what you were doing i mean i know she's 11 but she, you still have to tell her she's she actually goes, a yeah. better age i believe than than as you get older because they're actually not all closed down to yes to yes possibility right they're, absolutely yeah. i mean my kids have been subjected to oh my gosh so much stuff my son peter might have been eight and getting acupuncture um they oh, my always... little my little baby that was uh three months early she was having acupuncture uh at under one years old yeah like it's you know what? because it and boy it helped her because yes yeah, because she was under she didn't have um the oxygen so then right. we had spastic diplasia right so she wasn't, didn't get to walk. And do you know what I mean? It was like, yes. so you get on that right away. The severity of it is, you know. Right. And, and I do think that if, if a person is using holistic help yeah. at, at the minimalist for preventative care, and I mean that as minimal, like, like you watch your diet, you're exercising, you meditate, minimally taking care of yourself, you're going to notice the difference. Then you may go from your three month doctor's appointment to six months, because you're not going to need the medication 
Because every time you're adding a foreign um, medication or, or, or surgery in your system, it, it takes its toll on your body. And your body has to work twice as hard to get back to its homeostasis. So how is it going to do that if you keep adding foreign substances into it? So you have to constantly work on it. Even with over-the-counter supplements, you, you have to be very careful with what you're taking in. And I don't even mean a substance. That could be a thought. That could be somebody's energy. Anything that is going to affect you, yeah. you, you have to be very careful what you're willing to take in it's going to take its toll. And that's all, unfortunately, medical doctors may not have as much of an understanding. They're like, oh, it's stress. Oh, it's hormones. Yeah. Great. Help me manage it. They don't know how to manage it. No, they don't. And the, well, they give you the, the pharmaceutical ways to right. manage it, right? And then those have, um, yeah, it's, yeah, and, and you know, every commercial you watch when they talk about a drug, it has the side effects of, right. you know, if you have, you know, I mean, it's like, seriously, like, are you even going to put right. that in your body after the, the 20 lists of, you know, if you, if, it's just silly. But it's so crazy because the mindset is, well, if I could just take a pill and move on, nobody wants to put the work in. It's not easy. I'm, I'm not going to lie it's not easy it's every morning i am up at four in the morning doing yoga doing self breaky doing i don't you think i want to sleep till seven of course i do yeah but if i want to go out and function to the best that i can i need to take care of these steps yeah and it, it's no different than okay i gotta do my hair and makeup get dressed shower yeah, put, put some favorite clothes on and how do you feel? You feel good, right? You feel yes. like you go and manage your day. Oh, I got yes. this, 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 and you're kind of almost like, okay, let's go, right? You have intention, yes. and off you go, right? Right. And, and at the end of it, it's like, oh, I had a good day, right? right. This happened, this happened, right? Yeah. And it, then you want to wear the day. same outfit tomorrow. Right, because it's also good. <laughs> right. And it's right. like, it's, it's not the wool that you're wearing. It, it, it's the way you cared for yourself. Yeah. And the, and if you periodically, like if you ever read the Reiki principles, the hardest for me was just for today, I will not worry. I am a mom of three. I, I, I did not know a moment when I wasn't worried from the second I knew I was pregnant. So for me, I, I, I took something from Alcoholics Anonymous where I don't wanna start off with a day. I wanna start off for this minute and take it slower. Cause what happens is if I go, if I say just for today and then somewhere in the middle of the day, I have a slip up, I'm very hard on myself and yeah. then I'll ruin it for the rest of the day. So if you start off slow, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and I'm not going to worry. Wow, I did it. Okay, let's try now 40 seconds. And you slowly and gradually increase it till you're training your mind. That's all it is. But instead of trying to start with a goal that you can attain, start with something that's easier to attain so you have that positive I can do it. And you try harder. It, you know, it's, it's, it's so funny that we're so silly, right? Because we all kind of set ourselves up to fail, don't we? we yes. Do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work out. I'm not going to eat that. And look, right, right. And, and you, you get out of the gate half of the day and you're done. Right. <laughs> yes, and then absolutely. we shame ourselves and we do all of this guilt and da, 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 the, the patterns. And oh my. Yes. Goodness. And you don't realize the aftermath of trying and failing, like P nowadays failing is looked at as something so horrible. And it's really just a lesson. 
Well, and the, and you, and so what I've understood because I always hit the pavement really hard. Yes, <laughs> so I go down and blah, 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 for a while. Of course, and, uh, you know it's it's the biggest gift, right? It's, yes, I mean I I get to hear you know you're so strong. I can't believe you're so alive type thing, or right. you look really terrible and horrible, and you know you get these <laughs> comments because people don't know what to say to you, right? But it's you know just on the other side of that the polarity of how horrible and the lessons and what you pull out of all that right then all of a sudden you're swinging to the other side because your intention is i'm not staying there because that's not feeling too good right right well the funniest thing is my husband is an athlete he plays baseball as do my two sons mm -hmm. and his thing with me is if i have a bad at bat I analyze it. I'll step out of the box and be like, where did I go wrong? And then my next step back, I'll make the correction. And the next thing you know, he's making contact and hitting the ball. And okay, that worked. But if I do this, I'll hit it further. And, and I was like, wow, I could do that with anything. Yeah. Like, all right, I failed. But where did I go wrong? Because now I can tweak it that it so won't be so bad. So, so how about this? Because I'm here, when I hear that, I'm like, I wonder if that's a negative, where did I go wrong? Because that's kind of where I do, right? I, but Joe Dispenza talks about this. And he says to his kids, so how would you do it? If, if you had to do it again, what would you do differently next time? And right. then they walk through the thing and it's, that's what you're saying, right? And it's, yes. I, think, I think that I, I, I haven't done it a lot, but I think that that's an invaluable tool. Like It is. Because then you can see it, and then the next time you go to do it, it just goes, right? Absolutely. And I, I didn't realize it until watching my husband, let's say, taking batting practice. This is something that athletes do. They record their what they're doing, and then they analyze it. And they see what worked, what didn't work, how to tweak it, what what to do, so that their next uh, practice it gets better and better and better and better. And I'm like, I could do that. Why yeah. can't I do that? <clears throat> so something with yoga, let's say, because I have not always been the most flexible. So I'm like, why why am I not? doing this the way that the girl on the video is doing this and i'm like well maybe if i went like this and maybe if i start out like that and i ended up tweaking it and now i am flexible look at that at my age who would imagine i'd be flexible but i can do it yeah and, and you know so that i'm hearing what you're saying and i just uh, like the points of what i've just really learned in this last few years is to ask the question right to say like how you know how can i do this better how can i see this in a way that i i can i can pro process it or right. like just asking the question i guess opens up that space too for you to expand to to then have that as well apparently but, but jackie also bear in mind if you're asking the question yeah. you th there is a way you're supposed to listen for the answer and how is that Okay, so you, it, it's basically in a meditation state because a lot of times, you know, we've all seen the movies and we've all gone through where we're having our mental breakdown and it's why me and we're screaming and we're yelling. Oh, I've done. But you're not listening <laughs> to the why me. So that's why the reflection and the meditation on and the visualization all are ways that you're receiving and you're listening and you're seeing and you're being guided to how to do it. Cause we all have guides that'll teach us the, the way to every day get a, get a little better and a little better and a little better. Cause of course nobody's coming out the gate perfect. No, but I think just what you're talking about, like I need to be doing this. Like I need to have this structure and I've been, well, since COVID, I used to work every day for 10 hour days. Yeah. I was a hairstylist for 30 years and then, you know, worked with my husband in, in the office in the film industry. And I just, you know, I love being out and the people. And so now I'm at home and it's like, 
it's very difficult because I don't ever know what day it is or the time it is. I miss things, you know, just, just the whole, um, it's been, it's been quite a, it's quite a, it's important, I believe, to have that kind of, this is what I do, you know, and I, right. I'm still trying to process and get that in and some days I'm good and then it drops off. And <laughs> well, that's life. That's and, life. That's, and that's why I say to you, it's not easy. Because when you set a regimen, yeah, you know, sometimes things get in the way and it's like Tuesday, my husband had to be at the hospital for nine o'clock for a surgery. All right. Well, I'm going to have to get up a little earlier then because there is no way I'm stepping foot in this hospital, listening to doctors talk to me without a clear head. So I need to do my meditation. I need to do my Reiki. I need to shower and, and do all the stuff yeah. to set me up. And then I needed, his surgery was two hours. I needed that window to center myself, to be prepared for the afterwards. So you always have to think ahead, like, okay, prepare. But then th you're always preparing always so like for me after every reiki session i can't do back to backs it, it's no. no because i have to clear out my energy again i have to reground myself refocus myself before i can move on to another patient and you know and, and truthfully there's only so many people you can see in a day because well, it's training. You know, what you're saying there, I would come home years ago from hairdressing for, you know, 10 hour days, right? And you've touched and been and with all these people and they're, tell, they're talking to you, care about them. And I'm taking it all in. Right. <laughs> to get home, see my family and my kids and I'd be like, whoa, I'd be full. And, and, I, right. I, and I really struggled with that because I really felt like I was, I couldn't take any more in because I wasn't, you're not supposed to when you're there for people take it and you're supposed to you know just be a sound listen. engineer right so lots of lots of good lessons the list but that has to do one. with being an empath you can walk into a room and if the energy is tense you're gonna tense up and if the energy is everybody's laughing and having a good time you could be right in there too See, for me, I've had to learn, okay, when I walk into a room, I need to assess. I can't just go full in. I need to slowly enter the doorway and people watch. So I could see where many times, and, and it's, it's funny, but it's not funny. Many times I'm off in a corner by myself because I, I can't handle the energy being thrown at me. So the easiest thing is leave me in a corner. Let me do what I have to do to keep myself together. And then slowly deal like large crowds are never enticing for me. Yeah, I used to like it when I was younger, but I find it difficult. I find that I'm more of an introvert now. Yes. I love people and love to laugh and I love that, love that connection and I miss it dearly. But yes. um, I really do notice like I, I could, I can't get enough alone time. Like I just love that. <laughs> just like, maybe because I have, I keep having all these children. <laughs> I don't know but, but you know how wonderful that is? There are so many people that, are not happy with themselves that they don't want to be alone with themselves the fact that we're of the mindset of i don't know what i want to do first when i'm alone like it's, it's exciting, such a joy it? <laughs> yeah it's like Ooh, what do i do how would you do you know like you, you yeah. you're in a million different places yeah, I, I had one of those last night, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but like, oh. but then there's people like when I hear my husband's taking the kids out, I'm like, bless your heart. Yeah. And and I will stay home for the evening and I find that I'm annoyed when they come home early. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, 
I didn't finish my whole date with myself. Why are you home? Go right. back and come back in an hour. I had a whole hour left. <laughs> but it, it's, there are people that are like, oh my God, you're home alone tonight? How sad. And I'm like, are you kidding? I waited all week for this night. Oh, <laughs> you know, it, no. it, it's, I think it's a blessing that we can be alone with ourselves. Yeah. And you know, it's, um, I, you're right. I, it's, you just think that everybody thinks the same as you, but yes, it's quite, yeah, it's quite, you're like, okay, don't, nobody even knows what you're talking about, Jack. So, <laughs> well, that is one of the reasons why my circle is very small because yeah. there's very few people who are like-minded. Yes. I was talking with a woman the other day and she's like, oh yeah, you do holistic. And I'm like, yes. She's like, did you read the article about what one of you people did? <laughs> and I'm like, no, oh, I probably God. did not. And she's like, wow, this guy, told this woman to put a two inch screw in her head. She was three months pregnant and she'd it's have a her story. Right. It's not even and her she, story. It didn't happen to her. She's telling no, somebody she else's story. Even know so she can have, right, right. I know it's ridiculous. And then my question is, and that girl listens, like what's wrong with her? She needed more than a, a holistic doctor. She she needed help. She needed to like her. She, I mean, the what nobody was saying was, because then I'm like, forward me this article, I want to read it. She was doing it because her husband threatened her. She had another girl. She couldn't, he wouldn't stay married with her. And I'm like, yeah. So she was worried about her husband? Like, not really sure where the self-love is coming in. I think that's why we're here. I think my whole life, that I, that's what my conclusion is, is that we're here <laughs> to learn to love ourselves. Yes, like, yes. I just think that that's why we're here and we're trying to, I think we can learn to love ourselves by loving another, but it's like, yes. you, can't, you can't feel love. You can only feel the amount of love that you have, learn to to feel right yes so, so if you're so when we're feeling unloved that's our message that okay i'm not loving myself but it's just all it's simple but it's just not because we just don't we just weren't raised with it but it the, see now to take it a step further i'm sitting there and i would, I would have loved to have scanned her energy to oh. see just what chakras were blocked for how long how blocked like i have see that's the other aspect like i want to see what's going on on the inside to to understand that's where the science of holistic comes in that people aren't even taking into consideration i don't know maybe they thought we just pulled it out of the clouds but there is a science to it Oh, absolutely. And I love the science to it because it, it then it's all backed everything that we've been saying for all these years that people were like, oh, whatever. But it's and it, and it's just exploding right now. The information it's so incredible. Yes. Like, and, and that has a lot to do, I think, with COVID as well, because now people were forced to stay home and million and one things arose for people. And then it was like, oh, let me try this. Oh, let me do that. And and all of a sudden now they're receptive to other ideas that possibly they were so fast paced. Well, I'm in the city and I'm gonna drop by the psychologist. Wait a minute, did you ever try doing this? And since they're home for months at a time, all right, let me try this meditation. Let me see what mindful meditation is. And then they're seeing the positive repercussions and they're like, wow, maybe there is something to this. You know what? I was pretty messed up. I mean, I'm still on my way healing, but Aren't we all? I was just so messed up. And, and it was through this work on YouTube and, you know, 
uh, Joe Dispenza and, and uh, Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay and, and the multiple, every, it, like I, I just love them all because they all offer a different, they, a different aspect of and tools and it's just, you know what, I can't get enough of it and yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm very into, um, I need to see your energy, feel your energy, and then I will immerse myself. Yeah. So I, I have learned to put up that protective barrier. Whereas beforehand, I was always like, oh, wow, yeah. Well, I was raised like this. I did things like that. And they're like, oh, my God, your mother didn't love you. <laughs> I was like, how did you uh, get that? I you know, I, I love you. I just love you because, you know, what? I, I, it's just so it's nice to hear that that other people have lived down that journey, too. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I think it was so hard for someone like my dad being in that generation, my right. grandmother's generation. And it's like, no, we don't do things like that. We're going to do things like this. And it, we weren't the typical family of eat your vegetables because that's what the doctor said. You need the plate and it's got it. No, no, no. This vegetable has this vitamin that you need for this part of your body. There was always a scientific explanation. Okay, to the well, my mushy vegetables that were overcooked from my English mother, I'd like throw under the table and beat them up. The Brussels sprouts, my sister get beamed in the leg with the hot water. Oh, there's all my dinner. Our, our, I was there till 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. every night. It was terrible. So you yes. are very blessed. <laughs> yes, yes. But my father also taught me tricks to say, oh, you don't like the way this tastes? Mix it with your mashed potatoes. It don't taste as bad. Oh, okay. And then yeah. I learned. You know, yeah, that's just all those are those little things are, are that's the gifts in life, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And we have to be receptive to listening to other people's experiences because you're gonna learn from them. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Is that we're not normally not where uh, yeah, we think we already know everything and know it all. Yes, no one until you're about 21 that you start to realize, <laughs> shit, I know nothing. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, I took my son to the dentist today. And the dentist says to me, How old is he now? I said, Oh, he's gonna be 19. Oh yeah. Now I know why you're still here with him in the room. I'm like, Yeah, he don't know what to do. Yeah. I, I mean, we're we're there and with everything, he's like, Ma, is this okay? And I'm like, You have to learn to trust you. I'm here in case you make the mistake, but you have to listen to you you have to go inward and listen and then make the best listen is it going to be the right decision every time absolutely not but you'll learn what what you need to improve on yeah and 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 usually we always have ever i think everybody has that feeling of i knew that why didn't i trust right. that right that, that right. instead of no doing what they knew they go with what buddy says that they should have done right and, and then it falls apart right but, you know what, Christine? I have um, another podcast that I've got to do. I'm oh, like, good for you! Ding, ding, ding! I've got one. <laughs> Anyways, I have ha really enjoyed this conversation. You're a wealth, Thank you. wealth of knowledge. My goodness, what a gift you thank are! Thank you so much. I enjoyed this so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. I, I'd love to chat again down the road. So, if yes, you got you know things that you'd like to share. Make sure that you let me know. Okay, I and will. If people would like to get in touch with you for um, how would they do that? You can, uh, you have my LinkedIn. They could email me. It's um, Reiki, R-E-I-K-I, -I, healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G-K-M at gmail.com. Okay. And we'll put that on the link so that. Thank you. Yeah. And thank uh, you. I, I really enjoyed my day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and I wish you a, a million blessings over. Absolutely. Right back at you. Thank you. Take okay. care. Bye. Bye.